Hey folks, good to be back with you. And what I'd like to do real quickly is to give you another example of how to add vectors. I did a video uh, previous to this one where I showed the four different methods we use for adding vectors. And I did some examples and it occurs to me looking at the video that they were kind of simple. Maybe it would help to do a slightly more complicated example and use some of those methods from the last video to show how it works. Now, just a reminder, what are vectors good for? Okay, vectors are a mathematical entity, really, and they're useful to us because they describe things that happen in the physical world. And I've got my ripstick here, okay, this is mine. Um, I can ride it a little bit, I've got some stuff on it there. Um, I can ride it well enough, I get by, but I'm not as good as the average 10-year-old, okay? but. It, I, I get by. So this thing has these, these, this crazy drive system on it, these wheels that spin about that axis and that axis and this thing here in the middle that turns, okay? And when you add up all the forces acting on these things in vector form, what you get is a force forward. So when I ride this thing down the hallway in my building, <laughs> it's good to have tenure, um, I get to go forward by because of summing vectors. So there you go. There's an example. Let's do a, a vector problem. Okay? I work this out here. I'm going to have a vector A. Okay? And remember that little up caret. C-A-R-E-T is what that, that character is called. And sometimes they call it A hat or something like that. But that's mathematical notation for that's a vector. That's not just a number. It doesn't just have magnitude. What follows after that equal sign has magnitude and direction. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this 2i hat uh, minus j, okay? Minus j hat, okay. See that little caret there and that caret there? i and j are unit vectors. They have a length of 1 and a direction. That is horizontal, parallel to the x-axis. That is vertical, parallel to the y-axis, okay? And so this is, all, all that 2 is doing is stretching that vector out. It's changing its magnitude, but it's not changing its direction. No place in here am I going to multiply two vectors. Now you can, I just, it's just not what this is about. Okay, so there's, there's A and B. Okay, B hat, that's the other vector I want to do. That's I plus J. So that's those two uh, unit vectors. I'm just going to add them up. So there's a component that goes horizontal and a component that goes vertical. I'm going to draw a picture of this in a second, but I want to run you through the mathematical explanation and then we'll look at what, what the picture of it. Okay? Well, can I do that? Sure. Put a plus out there, I suppose. There's that. So I'm going to get 3i hat okay, minus j plus j plus 0 j. So if I do this right, C is now a vector that has a magnitude of 3 and is parallel to the x-axis, even though neither one of those were. All right, so what does this look like? Let me draw a, there's x, there's y. Let's see if I can do that. And it looks like that. Go up to there. There, that's pretty close. Okay, well, A is 2i plus j, so it goes out to here, or a minus j, I should say. Okay, there. That's A. Okay, starts at 0, 0, and goes to 2 and minus 1. That's, that's the recipe for how to draw that vector. And this one... That's B, okay? And let's see, let me stretch this out a little bit farther. Okay, there, 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 there. All right? If I add those together, what I'm going to get, and maybe I could even draw this in a different color. Hopefully you're looking at this in a color screen. There. That's going to be C hat. Or is it? Is that how this is going to work? Well, that uh, method of solution says this is right. The other way I can do this is I can do the nose to tail approach. Okay, There's the nose of one vector, there's the tail of the other one. 
So I'm going to take A and I'm going to make a copy of it and put it right there. Let's see if I can sketch that in. Okay. okay, remember there's that mathematical principle. It doesn't matter which uh, uh, order you add numbers in, you get the same answer. I can't remember if it's associative or community, whatever it is. Uh, distributive? I don't know what's one of those. Um, so I add, I'm going to go to B and then I'm going to add A. And that gets me there. The other way I can do it is I can take A and add B. And notice both form a path through space that gets me to that point, which is 3, 0. 3 over here and along the x-axis. Whoops. That doesn't look right there. Put a y up there, I guess. And uh, no, nothing in the, in the y-axis. So that worked. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you would prefer to do this in a trigonometric way, absolutely you can. Okay. You can use the law of cosines if you want. Okay, that's alpha, we'll call this beta, and I don't know, delta, how about that? And I know what this is, that's the magnitude of, sorry, B, and that's the magnitude of A, right there. Well, could you, could you use that to find the magnitude of C? Absolutely. Okay, I think that's the law of cosines, isn't it? You can do that. There's enough trigonometry and uh, trigonometric identities, it won't be very hard to figure out uh, that, that uh, spot right there. And if you know what these angles are, you know where that's going to be in space. So you can treat this as a trigonometric problem too by just simply drawing a picture. So there you go. Here we've used two different methods here. This is the unit vector method. And you'll see this in a lot of engineering books. This is a very, very standard notation. Um, one other thing, sometimes they don't put carrots above them. Sometimes they make the I and the J uh, bold face. Okay? And I, it's kind of hard to do that with a pen, but you, if you see that, that's what that is. That is this picture. This describes that. The, the exact same thing, just represented in different ways. If you want to take this and treat it as a trigonometric problem rather than an algebraic problem, you can, and you will get the right answer. So there you go. Uh, second example of how to add vectors. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.